We're staying with Daybreak, that is the hashtag actually, Daybreak, you can call in 0719 is the SMS line and Citizen TV Kenya, Trevor Mbija, Waiga Moura, the question we're asking is, where are the jobs? It's just that simple, we'd like to hear your views on it on Bulls and Bears. And joining us now is Edith Okoki, Acting Director General, National Employment Authority, thank you so much for making time for us, madam. And uh, your body has been in existence for almost three years now, we're just discussing that off air. Yes. How many jobs have been <coughs> provided and in what sector? from okay. the statistics you have? Uh, directly through the public employment services, which is a service that is offered by the authority, uh, we have been able to place about 41,600 Kenyans into employment. That is within Kenya and outside Kenya. Okay. okay. Yes. Do you have any specifics of specific sector? Okay, within Kenya, sort of where's, where have the bulk of the employees been taken? Because uh, mm. we have government officials talking about 850,000 jobs created or, or a certain number, but they don't say where. And so people then begin to ask questions. Yeah, you know what is the, uh, the authority mm. is actually just competing with other private recruitment agencies. And our services are free, where we register job seekers and employers also register vacancies uh, of, uh, uh, that, that they have. So they pick the registered job seekers from our data bank. Okay. And yes. So it could be anywhere? It could be anywhere. Private or public institutions? Private or specifically. We only deal with the private sector. The public sector is uh, the Public Service Commission. From right. this 21,600 you're talking 41, about? 41,000. 41, what, what is the age group? Is this, are this the youth or is it just this across This cuts across. We actually are involved in employment across the board. But of course, as we all know in this country, that majority are the youth. Are the youth. Yeah. You mentioned internationally. Which countries are we talking about? Mainly in the Middle East. Okay. Yes, and we've also done a lot of streamlining in that sector. By streamlining, Pro you mean protecting those who get jobs there? Yes, a lot of work has gone into that sector since 2014, when there was a moratorium. Yeah. And uh, what we have done is that uh, we have put regulations in place, uh, where now we had recruited, we have, uh, I would call it that all the recruitment agencies were re vetted afresh from an uh, initial 1,000, we now have uh, about 100 that have been vetted again by the authority and the certain criteria that they have to follow yeah. before we give them uh, accreditation. 41,600 in three years and there are hundreds of thousands of youth who are living in the institutions. Where do you think the gaps lie from where you stand, what you've seen so far? Um, in 2015, the, the government also passed a employment policy, national employment policy and strategy for Kenya. In that policy, we have strategies that we identified. You know, the, the authority is actually uh, here to enhance all government efforts and be able to advise areas where we think that a creation uh, employment can be created. We have also developed a tool which we call the employment creation analysis, where before uh, jobs, before somebody starts uh, an investment in this country or an investment that is already ongoing, we'll be able to assess the kind of jobs that are going to be created in that sector. For example, in the construction, road construction, even in the agricultural sector. And that is one of the um, strategies that we find in that policy. Okay. Yes. Let's go, go get quick reactions from some of our other panelists. Abraham, let me now start on your end there. Um, wording statistics uh, from UNDP, that was back in 2017. I don't know what they are saying now. One million young people join the workforce every year. They are looking for jobs. Uh, Kenya has about 81 dependents for every 100 working young adults, while the ideal should be 50 dependents for every 100 working age adults. Your reaction to some of that data and the numbers that she's given as well? I think uh, purely from a mathematical perspective, we are doing, we are doing a good job of it. Because one million are joining and we are only placing only so many. She, she said about 41,000. So clearly, a lot of, a lot of people are still unemployed and we are, we are putting in a million every year. Now, I think probably it's, it's, it's high time we, we accepted that the models we are using are not working. Because if you look at, when you say employment, it means that it's an employment of the labor, of labor in, in the production or service, or, or service delivery. So, which presupposes that there's a production process or a service delivery process. Mm -hmm. So it is those two that have to be revamped, then, then labor kicks in on its own. So looking at our, at our country, we are, we are an agri-based economy. 
whether we want to run away from it or not. And if if agriculture, for example, if we put agriculture at the center, just for just as, as, as a policy option mm -hmm. at the center, then now we start building everything around it. We we can we can build our tourism around it. The, 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 what are we saying that we have a system whereby they are able to they are able to to, to supply food to our to our, to, to our tourism. Now again, most of our most of our gacha produce is either consumed locally mm -hmm. as food or is exported primary in its in its primary pro form a maize, maize coffee tea what you imagine what would happen today we, we, we are the we're the, we're the, we're the biggest exporter <coughs> of tea <coughs> why don't we have the big boys in tea producing from here that means when this tea is leaves here and goes to another country when they're when they're adding value to it th those are our jobs but they are somewhere else and and ditto for tea for coffee like paratram we're the biggest pro producer of paratram and, and exporter but we don't have our, our the jobs made yeah, yeah. yeah. so 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 I, I think some of some of the problems i think uh, the, with the proverbio kiswahili ni liba kujidunga because we i think i think we can do we can do better we can we, we can create a, a process whereby we add value and build value and now even going further we, we are very technologically advanced in kenya i think we can build IT onto our agriculture, which is already happening, whereby the the producer is aware of the market, both access and information, mm -hmm. and cut out the middle men and women who are getting more value and don't plant a single item. Middle men, all right. Yeah. And uh, some you have created uh, employment through Nylab and Kuhasol. What are the challenges you're facing, and is it time we change tack? Because you're you're, you're one of the people who've created employment already. So from our from a, from our company's perspective and sometimes I need to remind people we are a private company not yeah. government because there's a lot of expectations sometimes <laughs> placed on Nyla it's a yeah. private company yeah. the last one year we've trained 463 young people trained trained our current cohort class right now is of 80 people out of these people we've only been able to place 70 70 or 75 on jobs as of today and we are seeing and that's just Nyla on the so Kuhal, a random 380, 388. Some, okay, that we're still trying to place right now, yeah. and 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 I'll address those challenges on one side. On the Kuhasol side, mm -hmm. we create a hundred new jobs every month. It's a online freelance jobs. online yeah. freelance jobs. Yeah. Uh, now the couple of things here I'm, I'm seeing. Number one is the training part. When young people come to us to get trained straight from university, they do not even have core life skills. We have to train them core life skills: communications, conflict, expectations, budget <coughs> management of when they get to work. So the training part is definitely needs an improvement. Mm -hmm. Industry is not going to absorb these people if the current with the current training they have. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, which brings you the internship op opportunities that are out there. We have 388 people we're trying to place in internships. When we walk to SMEs, they're saying we can't afford to pay them. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's where the debate for internships mm -hmm. came from. Mm -hmm. oh, well, we did not say we do not pay interns. We said if you find unpaid internships, take it, take it. Mm. because it's also another learning opportunity yes. do not walk away from it <coughs> one, one million people are coming out to the job market every year we don't have one million SMEs or companies that are going to absorb one person of course this has not been a very popular opinion online it is not mm. but you it doesn't have to uh, be popular it's companies true. misuse interns yes, exactly and that happens a lot and so objectively would say have also as a person coming out with the kind of education and investment that has been made on you have a three-month plan of learning from a company mm -hmm. pick a company come mm -hmm. work under more, more mm -hmm. okay be intern under him for three mm -hmm. months you will learn more than you'll ever have learned in a university even if he doesn't pay even if he doesn't yes. pay yeah. and so so you can see this this so there's a skill part and the skill part needs to be enhanced because this small to a company that needs somebody to work for them needs somebody who can actually deliver value for them to actually pay for value mm -hmm. now comes over to the placement opportunities there are very few there are very very few placement opportunities especially in white collar jobs when you come from university, most people don't want to take blue collar jobs. Mm -hmm. They don't want to take <coughs> agriculture. Mm -hmm. They don't want to take jobs that demean them. Okay, and so there's a, there's a there's a question of where do we get? Are we kicking somebody off their current job, their current position to give you a job, or are we creating the job? Mm -hmm. Do you get it? So are we creating opportunities, or are we bumping off somebody? You know, are people leaving. And so where are these opportunities supposed to come from? So you need to be able to start from somewhere. Don't expect that there's going to be a new seat for you straight from university waiting for you. You have to just, it has to work itself into something. And of course, you remember that most, most young people looking for jobs <coughs> might not have a university degree. They won't. Yes. They won't. Yes. They won't. Yes. And you're talking yes. about the, gradu the ones graduating, the 150,000. 
Mm. Out of this, so we have people coming from Tibet, people from coming from the usual mm. colleges in town, mm. and there are those who drop out. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and so we do have a serious problem when it comes to the youth and opportunity. So mm. for me, jobs would come from where? Online jobs, freelance mm. jobs. That's mm. moving to Kuhasso. They're very good jobs. They're not minimum wage 15,000 shillings job. Mm. An average job on a freelance platform Kuhasso is between 50,000. Mm. and upwards mm. okay but you still need skills mm. you still need the discipline to deliver that mm. work okay mm. so there's a big opportunity online number mm. two of course agriculture i mean number one would be agriculture for me there's a there's need for food you know there's a lot of space over there that mm. we could work on it mm. yep. two online <coughs> yeah. of course i will just go ahead and talk about tech companies i look at alibaba as a company it employs close to eighty thousand people if one tech company can employ eighty thousand people mm. google is on the upwards of close to hundred thousand people mm. uber is in the close of think fifty thousand people. i mean these companies have a lot of employees one mm. company that's less than 15 years old yeah. investing in tech scalable companies will create really big massive opportunities so let's go tech let's go tech <laughs> let's go manufacturing yes. as well china has managed to do that mm, yes. um, I mean, they have a 1.2 billion population, and you can see how well they have done manufacturing, creating opportunities for everybody. Although, in my experience, uh, and even in China, visit that some of those jobs are not decent jobs. Okay. Mm -hmm. They are not the jobs that give you uh, what do you call this? That, that they, they do not. Sort of at yeah, the end yeah, of the day, yeah, yes. yeah, it's just jobs for jobs. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Arnold, you've been at the National Youth Council. Yes. What are the youth saying? Where are the gaps? Is it an issue of complacency? Is it that they are? Issue, their concerns are not being addressed. How come? What are, what are their concerns, mostly, from the youth perspective? Actually, at the formation of uh, the National Employment Authority, I was still at the National Youth Council. Yes. And when the bill was brought up by Senator Sakaja, I am among the few people who actually opposed it. <laughs> and my argument was very, very simple. And I went to even to Parliament, did a presentation that coming up with a national employment, at that particular time we called it a National Youth Employment Authority. That's what it was called initially when it went to Parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, I said, <coughs> that is like, you know, you are looking for a gown. It's like a lady putting up a gown for her wedding and she doesn't even have a girlfriend or a boyfriend. I mean, <laughs> you do not have a spouse and you are preparing you. The cut before the <laughs> yes. Yeah, because we do not have, as in, do we have jobs? We are setting up a shop for jobs. To provide jobs. To provide jobs. Mm -hmm. But where are the And jobs? no one is actually providing the jobs. It's just like all of us meeting up at dinner with cutlery and no that one no cooked. <laughs> no one went out to do anything. So I felt like we actually were putting the cart before the horse. Uh, so for me, uh, the National Employment Authority still remains that gown without a spouse. It still remains a plan, a wedding plan, without any prospective uh, partner showing up. We actually and, and you can actually see 41,000 jobs they've actually placed out there. The government is not in the business of being into agency of placement. Services. Mm. And I will tell you, uh, Youth Fund, one of the functions for Youth Fund is actually the same, same thing they're doing. What Senator Sakaja and uh, the thinking around it put into the bill was to copy paste what was in the National Youth Council Act, what was in the Youth Fund Act, what was in the Women Enterprise Fund Act. This one is actually... I'm sure they wouldn't say that if, if he I if did, and, was here. And I did. I even wrote, an, uh, my, of course, my legal brief on that bill, went to Parliament, I published it, it's online, on that. Because I felt at that, at that particular time that job creation is an integrated uh, work. Okay. And in this country, for example, we normally uh, decide on what to do and then build data to justify that later on. Mm. Essentially, when you're doing policy, you have to start from data. So you build data, and then from data, you get the indicators, and from the indicators, of course, then you come up with policy. Uh, we will talk about the three P's of policy, that there is a problem, then you manage the politics, and then you build the program. In this country, we start up with the program, then think, okay, it's coming up with politics, so we go back to managing politics, and then we justify. Mm -hmm. So we are at a place and where... That's what you think happened with the... Who, who with, uh, with, with, with this particular organization. Okay, you, she's you, you, here and she'll She's actually here. And I'll tell you, I'll actually speak from, uh, as a person who was elected to the National Youth Council to represent Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Briefly, please. Yes, so, so you'll actually realize that they launched it the other day, three years since it started. So why are you launching an organization that was actually gazetted in 2016? In 2019. In 2019. That should tell you a lot about where the priority is because even for categorization, they have taken a bit a long time before it's categorized. So it's one thing to have a law and it's one thing entirely to operationalize it. Okay. Let's now moving to data. Yes. But number one, like he said, we have got a problem with what comes out of school and what the market needs. Young people who come out, do not have good employability skills. 
completely mm -hmm. that uh, companies including here when you come in here you actually have to be put on a program somehow to fit into mm -hmm. the in-house style of working around here everywhere because you cannot just get a product from school and embed it at workplace mm -hmm. this is a challenge mm -hmm. and here i'll actually i have spoken on this show i've mentioned this before that to sort out this issue number one we have to sort out our education mm -hmm. uh, training regime and mm -hmm. the skills mm -hmm. that is number one number two Access to information is still a challenge. They are still trying to fill that gap by telling you that they are coming up with a database and then employers plug in. That young people in this country know what is happening in the US, know what is happening in the EPL League, they know what is happening in uh, God, uh, GOT, uh, Game of Thrones, yeah. and everything, but they know nothing about what their own government is planning for them. So access to information is not cliche, not it is serious. It is serious. I want to interrupt access you. to market. Okay, yeah. finally, yeah. Yeah. because she needs to give a right to yeah, the she will, she'll actually come to that. So uh, access to market. Okay. At the marketplace, you are either bringing in goods or services. Mm -hmm. Young people do not produce goods so much. The only thing they have got is themselves, the services. Those services should be skills, okay. should be the education they have. Okay. Then access to credit, young people do not. He okay. will actually tell you that getting credit is difficult, mm -hmm. finally. Of the five of them is technological transfer. We still have got Chinese here doing stuff that young people should be doing. We've got expatriates here doing stuff that you and I should be doing here. Okay. But they are paid much more than us. So those five areas need to be looked into. Okay, right. yeah. hold that thought. But Mukoki, will, you'll get a right of response right after this quick break. And also, we'll also have your feedback. We have a lot of them coming through to our news. Do you want to just take a briefly quick break first? No? Take the break first. All right. We'll be right back. <laughs> it's a deal. We have agreement. Let's take a break. Then we'll we come back. Then we'll be back with the feedback. <laughs>